Joe Manchin just wants to see the world burn. He's once again blocking the Democrats paltry efforts to do something about climate change. And it has become so indisputable that he doesn't care about this and that he is willing to let the climate just go up in flames. That even the New York Times, this is how they wrote about his most recent move. Senator Joe Manchin of West Virginia, who took more campaign cash from the oil and gas industry than any other senator, and who became a millionaire from his family coal business, independently blew up the Democratic Party's legislative plans to fight climate change. That's the New York Times. That was like the beginning of the article. Usually the truth, let alone the opining happens much later. But no, he's killing it once again. They are sort of in the background still trying to do some sort of reconciliation bill. And every month or so we get an update that implies that oh, maybe we're moving towards a deal. But no, no climate according to him. And of course, this is just the latest in a long line of him single handedly or teaming up like the Wonder Twins with Kirsten Cinema, destroying these efforts. First, he killed a plan that would have forced power plants to clean up their climate warming pollution. Then he shattered an effort to help consumers pay for electric vehicles. Finally, he said he could not support government incentives for solar and wind companies or any of the other provisions that the rest of his party and his president say are vital to ensure a livable planet. It's weird that the guy who owns a coal company doesn't want to subsidize renewable energy. So weird and totally not corrupt. But here's the thing, breaking news not long before we went live. Is he actually killing it? He was very clear within the last day. But now we read on Axios, Manchin opens door to climate spending after July inflation numbers. See, he went on a radio show in West Virginia and said, Chuck, talking about Chuck Schumer, can we just wait until the inflation decisions come out in July and then make a decision? Inflation is absolutely killing many, many people, metaphorically, not literally like the climate change will. But as far as I'm concerned, I wanted climate. He speaks like Trump. I want energy policy. Chuck, if you're on a political deadline and it has to be done in July, the one thing you know you can get done is basically do that bill, write a piece of legislation on reducing drug prices, letting Medicare negotiate. That saves about 288 billion over 10 years. Take 40 billion of that, extend the ACA discounts that people were getting. So he was done with it, but now he totally, totally wants climate. And so um, I don't know about you guys, but the football has been placed out again. I feel like running towards it and trying to kick it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so there's a lot here. And this is a really important story so because it shows you not just about this bill, but about how politics works. First of all, if the New York Times mentions your donors, that means they have gotten permission from other people in power. Otherwise, they will never, ever mention it. They did one good piece about Manchin's donors a while back, which we gave them a lot of credit for. And now this is their second time mentioning it. <gasps> okay, it's like by far the most relevant thing. It is nearly 100% of politics. But if a mainstream media outlet is mentioning it, that means other corporate Democrats have told them it's okay. You can actually say it this time because there are an equal number at least of corporate Democrats on the other side. Otherwise, they would never ever say it in a story. So that must mean the establishment is pissed, okay? So or at least some portions of the establishment are pissed. And by the way, there are a lot of donors who do want action on climate change. Because one of the things that, and I told you this a couple of years back, I won't get to what we said about Manchin in a second too. Because a lot of rich folks and some of them Bad guys, some of them good guys who've always been on the right side of things. But even the, some of the bad guys are going, "Oh yeah, we live on this planet. Like we have a gazillion dollars, but it's not going to be much use to us if the entire planet melts down." Okay, okay, maybe we let you do something about that. But now, of course, on the other side is the coal companies, the oil companies, and they push back super hard. So it's a little bit of a battle, and and so. That's why you've got the New York Times willing to say the truth for like a second. It was mentioned in a paragraph and then they moved on. Okay, now to the heart of the issue. Um, we told you, here, we got a clip, right? We did. Uh, of me saying, but we, you, if you watch the Young Turks on any given day, you've heard me say this thousands of times. You've heard Anna, John, everybody say this. But, but I give you this old clip because I want you to understand politics is solvable. It's, a, it's just that. People like the New York Times, CNN, corporate Democrats, they're choosing not to solve it. It's actually super simple. That's why we're almost always right. I'll tell you the magic answer as to how we solve it in a second. But this is us telling you what was gonna happen before it happened. I'm telling you right now, the minute they pass the infrastructure bill, that's a corporate backed bill. 
they lose all leverage instantly. They have literally zero leverage. I wish it weren't the case, but that's the case. And so what is Manchin gonna do? What any sensible negotiator would do, I changed my mind. In fact, I didn't even change my mind. I told you ahead of time that I was equally likely to vote no. And you were an idiot and surrendered to me anyway. And that's exactly what he did. He said, "Oh yeah, I'm not gonna vote for your bill." And then he said, "Okay, come, come this way a little bit further, a little bit further. Don't don't criticize me. Don't criticize me." Which leads to the, uh, that last portion that John mentioned. The reason he goes on West Virginia TV is for the uh, or radio to talk about like, "Oh no no no, you never know." It's because for the first time he has gotten pushback from other Democrats. And Look what a t- tiny, tiny amount of pushback did. Like, remember, Biden has a pushback and sent his spokesperson out today to say, I will never push back. I'm the weakest person in America. My beloved Joe Manchin has basically done what me and my donors want anyway, right? So Biden's not doing it, but it's like, show Senator Whitehouse, Senator Schumer tweaked him a little bit, like in the public. Oh, he got mentioned in a newspaper article. They sent out a tweet and he's like, whoa, 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 whoa. I mean, I was, I was, I was, I was gonna do it. I mean, look at what a tiny microscopic amount of pressure gets him to do. Imagine if you'd put a world of pressure on him. All of a sudden, he'd be able to go, I like climate, I like climate, right? <laughs> so oh, this is so fundamental. So why did we know he was never gonna do the climate deal? Because politics is simple, three words, it's always been the case. Certainly since the mid 1970s, follow the money. If you follow his money, and we have on TYT Investigates, we showed you made five million dollars personally from coal in the last ten years, and so is his son. So you know, and he's got a coal company, etc. But most importantly, the donors. The donors are he's the number one recipient of all fossil fuel campaign donations. They're bribes. So we tell you all the time: if you follow the money, i.e., follow the bribes, you will get to that answer one hundred percent of the time. That's why we're apparently geniuses. Like the mainstream media can't figure it out. They're like, what is it? Is it the color of the bill? Is it the when they release it? Is it the summer, the fall? I can't tell anything. What's going on? What are the debates and the principles and the ideology? We're like, uh, duh, it's the bribes. We're right 100% of the time. It's super easy. <laughs> so there, I solve politics for you. And, and what is the other thing we say? When de- corporate uh, useless lying Democrats tell you, there's nothing we could do. There's nothing we could do. What do we tell you? Pressure. You apply a tiny amount of pressure, and he's like, oh, 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 I can't believe you're twisting my arm. I like the climate, I like the climate. We're right about everything, okay? It's And it's not because we're geniuses, because it's really, really simple. All of Washington has to lie to you to make it appear complicated. Carolyn. Yeah, that's. I mean, that's absolutely right. I think the strategy that he is ostensibly going with now is that he's worried that with inflation, any that voters might look at any attempt to increase spending anywhere might be, you know, really volatile for him. People thinking that this has anything to do with inflation or gas prices. Of course, these things are like very indirectly related, as everything is. But you know, the reality is that spending on infrastructure and necessary um, improvements to our climate change policy are absolutely unrelated to, you know, the gas prices every day that people are seeing and if that were the case, like let's go back. I believe I read today that um, Manchin in his first election for um, Senate, like his big ad was that he shot a rifle through Obama's um, climate policy or That's whatever. Right. That's right. And and look how much higher gas is now and we haven't done anything. So like equating Mm. climate policy with higher gas prices is totally false. This is what the Republicans are doing. They're saying we can't have this because people can't afford food, they can't afford gas and they're absolutely unrelated. We only need to look at our past inaction on climate change and how much higher gas is right now. So yeah, he's absolutely wasted two years of the Democrats time. Um, What my question is, is that like, do we really think that this is is just Manchin or do we think that there are like other Democrats in the wings who, you know, has Manchin basically like acknowledged that he will be the villain, him and Cinema are like sort of trading off, rotating. Like, do we really think that this is just him or do we think that there are people in the wings Mm -hmm. in our own party that um, are also pressuring him not to do anything so that they don't have to go out and be held accountable as he is basically like, he knows that this is his position in the party now. So that's a nuanced answer, so let me just, Couple things real quick. So, uh, 
TYT is the longest running show in internet history. So we actually covered that ad when Manchin put it out. Him saying like, oh, I hate Democrats. Look at someone like, shoot Obama's climate bill. I hate anyone trying to do anything about climate change. Boy, it was so hard to tell which direction Manchin was gonna go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Reporters were flummoxed by it for years on in the Biden administration. Oh, which one, what's he gonna do? What's he gonna do? It's so obvious what he's gonna do. Number two, Caroline's point is devastating. Not only have they not done anything on climate since then, not only did we have four years of Trump since then that put us backwards, but they didn't pass this climate bill. How could it be the climate bill that caused inflation if it never passed? Yep. I mean, these things are super simple, right? So th that's why Washington is an illusion. Everything you see from corporate media is meant to trick you. Yeah. So, uh, so they don't say these things that are super, super obvious that would get you to understand that politics is simple. Now, yeah. to Caroline's point, real quick, to, to her question, uh, I would guess that there are forty Democratic senators that agree with Manchin. Now, again, if you tell that at New York Times or CNN, their heads will explode. How dare you, dear sir? Those are wonderful, <laughs> powerful people. And they have told us that they don't agree with Manchin. So we have written it down in our role as journalists without questioning it or asking for any evidence. Okay, mm -hmm. now why do I say at least 40? It seems like Markey and White House and a couple others really do care. And White House actually did a great job of putting out a tweet that Biden could do like nine different executive orders. That would actually help a lot. It wouldn't be as good as this bill, but it would help a lot. And my prediction is Biden will do zero of them. Yeah. Okay, so why do I predict that about Biden? Why do I predict it about the other 40 Democratic senators? Because they all take money from fossil fuel companies. So if you're bribed, you're gonna do what the person who bribed you told you to do. Now, at this point, they don't have to come forward. Manchin's their cover story. Oh, can you believe Manchin killed that bill? Golly gee, voters, I am so mad. New York Times, write it down, write it down. CNN, say it on there. I am so mad about that bill. Then they turn around, I bet you very literally call their donors and say, don't worry, it got killed. Yep. Because they're corrupt. I solved it for you. Yep, and if the Democrats wanted, they could institute some sort of litmus test that you cannot accept money from these industries. They could do that to send a strong mm. signal to the voters that they actually care. Because the voters certainly care. The voters care about dealing with climate change. The Democrats just don't care that that's something they could theoretically use to win elections if they actually reassured people. Um, yeah, your, your, your point is so good. Um, and I, look, I don't know what's gonna cause the massive rise in gas prices in three years or in seven years or in 12 years, but I know we're going to endlessly have those. And uh, even between them, when the price drops from its peak, it will uh, settle at a point that's higher than it was previously because I got news for you. Uh, the Republican plan, and for many Democrats, the plan is to uh, drill more pipes, to extract more oil. No new oil is being created, by the way. You can suck up what's down there as fast as you want, you're just gonna run out, that's how it works. The sun isn't running out, the wind isn't running out. Seems like maybe at some point we should transition over to that. Um, and for now, Manchin's more concerned about inflation and the deficit. And as far as I can see, the only solution to that is for the Republicans to take over. They won't fix those problems, but you'll never hear about it again. And they'll pass trillions of dollars in tax cuts with no concerns about the deficit whatsoever. Uh, for now though, Manchin says um, we need to find out about inflation. Bureau of Labor Statistics is gonna release July's consumer price index on August 10th. So oh, I hope there's good numbers because that's totally <laughs> why he's doing it or not. Uh, for now though, we do have some numbers, not those numbers, but uh, well, we know that uh, for the uh, two, uh, 2021 to 2022 election cycle, uh, Joe Manchin got the most money from a number of different industries, including, seems relevant, coal mining. Huh. Also, mm. all mining huh. and natural gas transmission and distribution, huh. oil and gas, also savings and loans. Huh. Hey, tobacco, that's fun. Alternate energy production and services is at number two. I don't know what that actually includes. It sounds like it would be solar and wind, I'm doubting that it does. But if that is what it is, could you guys give him more money, please? Could you become number one so that he'll do the right thing? Also, electric utilities are there. I'm sure none of this is influencing it. And they're not giving him money to influence him. That would be bribery. They just like democracy and want to be a part of it and thus the money. Um, but honestly, as much as that, as much as like you can find individual, like the, the world, the nation's largest coal producer, Peabody Energy, uh, they gave $5,000 to Manchin. TYT Investigates reported that. Like, that's obvious corruption. Um, Alliance Resource Partners CEO publicly thanked Manchin in a quarterly earnings call. 
That's good. Uh, Nick, the future generations aren't giving him any thanks for dooming them. But for right now, there's a CEO that has nice things to say. Honestly, as important as that donor money is, I'm not even convinced that that's the most important part. Because donor money goes to your campaign and you want that, but that's not your money. You can't get a tune up on your Maserati with that money. You can't buy a bigger yacht with that money. No, for you to do that, you need your own money. And he's getting it very directly, very literally. Here are his yearly dividends from his his energy company. That is so much money per year, just in dividends. He's not, understand, Manchin is not digging for coal. I wanna be very clear about this. He is not down there <laughs> digging up the coal. He just sits back and earns hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars in one year. Over $800,000, actually two of them were over $800,000. All told, he's made well over $5 million and he would like to continue making that fabulously large amount of money. Um, understand it has no effect on his life, he already has the Maserati, he has the yacht. Look, look at Manchin, what do you think he's doing with his money? It doesn't matter, it's just a number in a bank account. But for that to go up, your future must be doomed and he is perfectly fine making that trade off. Okay, I just want to say, I'll ask two things in here from me. One is, I want you to know that in this, the things that he killed, he also killed a tax raise on rich people and corporations. Why? He's a rich person and owns a corporation. Boy, yep. this is so complicated to figure out. Um, so, uh, and, and to John's point, um, Look, the campaign donations also matter, especially for Manchin, because it allows him to protect his coal company and to get contracts for his coal company, because he's a really powerful senator. And if you're in the coal business, you'd want to give his company a contract so that he looks out for you. So both his own personal money and the campaign donations wind up helping him get richer and certainly more powerful, etc. And so at the end of the day, now here, uh, I will instantly become the best reporter in uh, in in politics. You ready? Joe Manchin is a liar. <laughs> he only cares about the money. Boom. No other Washington reporter has ever said that. I just said that. I'm obviously correct. They're all obviously incorrect. I'm the best journalist in America. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for watching the Young Turks. Really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.